my ex-husband showed up at my parents' house. I need you to pack up your stuff and leave right now. What? Despite my loss for words, my ex-husband continued. My wife is pregnant. Yes, your sister. Yes, my ex-husband. He had an affair with my sister and left me five years ago. Oh, I want to create a good environment for the baby. Unlike a single lady like you for the rest of my life, we can make better use of this house than you. You're infertile, so no one wants you. You know what I'm saying? Just stop thinking and get out of here. I sighed and shook my head. I can't. What? Oh, come on. You don't know who lives in this house right now. Immediately after, I saw a large figure appear from behind me. My husband turned blue and started shaking. Why? My name is Jane. I'm an office worker who turned 35 this year. Thankful of the fact that I am seen to be well respected within the company, I'm one of those who have risen up the ladder among my peers. I'm living a good life now, but there have been twists and turns up to this point. The biggest thing that happened in the last few years was the divorce. The cause was my ex-husband's infidelity. Five years ago, Joe, my husband at the time, eloped, and it turned out to be my own sister. She's always had a penchant for coveting my possessions, and she's very consistent on it. I'll give her that. But it was still out of the ordinary. At the time, Joe and I were co-workers. Joe was a soft-spoken, perceptive person. As a young man, I was attracted to that about Joe. Then Joe took a liking to me and we started dating. After a while of dating, I introduced Joe to my family. Since we were dating on the premise of marriage, we talked about how we wanted to make things right. I happened to be back at my parents' house at the time. The moment my sister saw Joe's face, I was so surprised that she let out a surprised voice. The reason was, my sister and Joe went to the same university, and they knew each other. After that, my sister and I and Joe often went shopping together. We had a lot of fun. We had a great time. We continued to socialize even after Joe and I were married. However, after a few times of the three of us, I began to feel more and more uncomfortable. We would get excited about topics that only Joe and my sister knew about. They started going out alone together in secret. You went out with my sister yesterday? I wish I could have gone with you. Oh yeah, maybe some other time. That made me kind of nervous. And then one day, I was invited to dinner by a colleague from the company where Joe and I work. I gladly accepted the invitation, but I got a shocking revelation. Joe was seen entering a hotel room, arm in arm with a woman who was not me. I asked my co-worker to describe the woman. It turned out to be my sister. I didn't want to believe it, but when my co-worker showed me a picture of her, I had to believe it. I asked my colleague to send me the photo data. I decided to question Joe that day. Hey, what's this all about? What? N no, no, this is... Joe, with his simpering attitude, was moping the whole time. You've been cheating on me this whole time, haven't you? You two made fun of me, right? Did you have fun? No matter what I asked, Joe didn't say anything. He just looked down. Joe disappeared the next day. When I woke up in the morning, Joe was nowhere to be found. I didn't think it was possible. I tried to call my sister, but she was disconnected. It wasn't until three days later, I found out that my sister and Joe were together. At the house where me and Joe were living, the divorce papers came. About the same time, I received an email from my sister. 
The email from my sister read, I will be happy with Joe. Just those words. Naturally, I couldn't accept that. But I didn't know where to go to protest. I couldn't get in touch with her. Furthermore, it seems that Joe had sent his resignation letter by mail to his employer. I had no more connections in any direction. I was at my wit's end, and finally decided to divorce him. And for a while after that, I couldn't get over it. I couldn't accept the idea of my own sister and my husband eloping. I just couldn't accept it. But I couldn't stay depressed forever. So I decided to take my anger and resentment out on my work. While I was working so hard, I could forget about Joe and my sister. And it worked. I was recognized for my contribution to the company. I was given a good position. Then I was blessed with good fortune. Five years have passed since my sister and Joe eloped. Life has been going well for me. Then one day, I had no work that day. I woke up later than usual, thinking of having my breakfast. And when I got up from the bed, I heard my phone on my bedside table. It was a phone call. I looked at the screen and saw a blocked call. Normally, I wouldn't answer it, but I answered it with all my might because I woke up from sleep. Yes, who's calling? Oh, Jane, it's been a long time. Hey, it's me, Joe. I'm glad you took my call and that you're still using this number. To my surprise, it was my ex-husband, Joe, who called me. I almost slid off the bed in surprise. What? Joe? Why? Why are you being so cold? Why? We were a couple once. I could at least call you. Joe, while laughing, said what was so funny. He acted as if nothing had happened. I remembered the anger I thought I had forgotten. What do you mean, a former couple? You've got to be kidding me. How dare you contact me just like that? What the hell do you want? Oh, come on. Calm down. You haven't changed a bit, have you? His easygoing tone irritates me even more. Perhaps sensing this, Joe finally got down to business. Well, yes, yes. You're living at your parents' home now, right? Why don't you pack up your stuff and move out right now? Because your sister and I have decided to move into that house. This doesn't make any sense to me at all anymore. I don't know what kind of thought processing he's going through. We got married, actually. We recently had a baby. We want to provide a good environment for her. Of course, you wouldn't say no, would you? I'm saying this out of the kindness of my heart. If you stay at home with your parents forever, you'll never be able to remarry. I suddenly got a headache. Please, don't be such an idiot. You're right, Joe. I'm back at my parents' house now. I don't know where the hell you got that information from, but I don't care. And of course, I would refuse. Why would I do that for you both? That I would give up my parents' house for you people? With that, Joe came back at me in a slightly harsh tone. He seemed to slightly take aback. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're 35 years old and infertile. I don't know how you can find someone to marry you. When Joe and I were married, I never got pregnant. I'm assuming that's what he meant by infertile. That's a disgusting thing to say. Is that all you have to say? Because I will never give you this house. And saying that, I just hung up. I didn't want to talk to Joe anymore. But still, it was too selfish. He had an affair, he eloped. And now, they want to take my house too. I hope they give up now, but I don't know what will happen next. A few days passed. I was busy at work that morning. I finally took a lunch break after 2 p.m. I went to my favorite restaurant near my office. I finished my lunch. When I entered the entrance of the building to go back to the office, I saw a familiar figure. No way! How could he be here? It was Joe. He had gained so much weight over the past five years. 
but the way he stood there was unmistakably Joe. I immediately tried to hide, but before I could do so, he saw me. Joe was saying, Oh, finally. He called out at me, and he came fluttering toward me. Oh, there you are. I waited long, you know. So, to continue our conversation from the other day, when can you leave? I'd like you to leave by next month, if possible. But I told you no to that talk. And the nerve for you coming all the way to my office. Get the hell out of here. Joe has a smile on his face, but he looks annoyed and continues to talk. You're talking like that again. I don't see why you, Jane, a single woman, should have to live in that house. We'd rather have it with our unborn child. Wouldn't it be better if she lived there? With her mother and father? Am I wrong? You're not even listening. No matter how hard I tried to talk him out of it, he will eat me up. Joe kind of terrified me. You're being a little pushy, aren't you? No matter how much you ask, what you're asking is impossible. You had an affair and eloped on your own. Why can't you go live somewhere else? When I said this, Joe wrinkled his face. He raised his voice. You listen up. The only reason I had the affair in the first place was because you were infertile. If you had been able to give me a child, I wouldn't have had an affair. It's all your fault. So take responsibility and at least give us a place where we can live. I can't even begin to fathom it. Saying it's my fault he had an affair? It's too much to take the blame. Are you serious right now? I've got work to do. I have to go. Joe was still trying to say something, but he finally seemed to notice the stairs around him. He told me to remember that, and he left the entrance. Joe finally gave up on me. That's what I thought, but I was reminded that I was naive. A week after, Joe came to my office, after work was over. I was relaxing at home, watching TV. Suddenly, the intercom rang. I wasn't expecting anyone to come to visit, so I got up. I decided to look into the intercom monitor anyway. Standing there were Joe and my sister. I've really had enough of this. I rushed to the front door and opened it vigorously. Oh, Jane. Did you get your packing done? I didn't hear anything from you, so I came all the way here in person. Wow, long time no see, sis. You heard from Joe, didn't you? We're having a baby. You know, I'll take care of it when it's born. All I could do was to sigh in spite of all this. What's the matter? Are you tired? Well, I don't really care anyway. But listen to me. It's great that we're having a baby, but... But we don't have the money. So we're going to have to live here, okay? My sister says so with a superior look in her eyes. Joe further opens his mouth. Yeah, so I recently realized that this house is not yours. Are your parents home? Let me talk to them. It's your mother and father's first grandchild. I bet they'll accept us, right? I couldn't help but laugh when he said that. I didn't think that he didn't know about this. What are you laughing at? You're not very nice. Hurry up and get mom and dad out. Huh? Are you serious that you didn't know? Mom and dad are gone. Yeah, my parents don't live in this house anymore. After you, Joe, and I divorced and I moved back home, they gave me this house as a tidy gift. And now they are living a retired life in the countryside on my mother's side. So I am the owner of this house. When I confronted them with this fact, both my sister and Joe's eyes widened. Understand? This house is my house, so I have the right to make all the decisions. I said it so clearly, but Joe still insists. Well, okay then. Jane can live in this house. Let's live together, okay? Let's be friends again, just the three of us, just like before. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a great idea. You won't be alone in such a big house. It must be so lonely to live alone, right? We'll all be happy if we live together. Another outrageous idea. I was about to argue with them, 
I was about to open my mouth when suddenly... Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so loud. But look, it's my ex-husband and my sister that I told you about. It was my now husband who approached me, and in his arms is our daughter. My husband mumbled, I see. He greeted Joe and my sister in confusion. Hi. Good evening. I'm Jane's husband. This is our daughter. Isn't she cute? Both Joe and my sister couldn't close their mouths. They must be very surprised. To tell you the truth, I have already remarried. About a year after Joe and I divorced, I met my current husband through a friend. Things went smoothly. We got married less than six months after we started dating. Soon after, I became pregnant with our daughter. Now I work and am a housewife at the same time. My husband helps me with housework and childcare, so I wouldn't neglect my work in our home, and I have been able to get a promotion. I think you get the idea now. There's nothing you can do. You can't take advantage of me at all. My husband, my daughter, and I. We're a family, and we get along just fine. What is this, Jane? You're not infertile? No way, that's a lie. Joe starts to question. What the hell? You're my sister and you're married to someone so handsome? I can't believe you're married. It's not fair. It's not fair. Kate began to stamp her feet as she said that. My husband looked down at her coldly and said, That's the way it is. Please leave us alone. If you ever come near our family again, I will call the police. Is that clear? The word police and the force of my husband's words pushed them over the edge. Joe and my sister turned blue in the face and immediately left. After that, Joe and my sister never appeared in front of me again. They were in financial trouble. They snuggled up at Joe's side of the family. But they found out about what they did five years ago. And they were not impressed. So they turned them down early. No wonder. And this is what I heard from a mutual friend of ours. Joe was having an affair again without fail. They are currently in the middle of a divorce. The reason for this is also surprising. As a matter of fact, my sister was never pregnant. She was lying to get back home somehow. And apparently, Joe didn't know about that. That she wasn't really pregnant. He was also deceived. Of course, a lie like that was easily exposed. He eloped with my sister because he wanted a child. If she wasn't pregnant, then he didn't need her anymore. Joe had been having affairs because he wants children. However, in the future, Joe will never be able to have children. The probability that Joe is infertile. I'm not a doctor, so I can't say for sure. But given the circumstances, it's extremely likely. I wonder when Joe will realize this. Or will he finally find out? Either way, it's none of my business anymore. And then one day, I received a letter from Joe at home. I was dubious, so I decided to check it with my husband just to be sure. The letter said that he went to the hospital for a checkup and was diagnosed as being incapable of having children and that he regretted what he did. He regretted eloping with my sister five years ago and that he wanted to try it with me again. Naturally, I ignored the letter. My husband tore the letter to shreds in a fit of anger. He must have given up when he didn't receive a reply or maybe he didn't expect a reply from the beginning. I never received another letter from Joe. He was a selfish and unfulfilled man to the very end. I should just forget about such a man and live life happily. I now live with my kind and caring husband, with a kind and caring husband and a precious daughter in the prime of her life. I would do anything to preserve this happiness that I have finally found. That's what I promised myself.